On this episode of the Nova Project, we fix up our engine mounts. So you remember early on in the build of this car, we tried to fix up our engine mounts using some um, some window sealant that I was recommended, but it wasn't the right stuff and it just came out really gross and uh, black and gooey and did not help anything. So what I've done is decided to do this properly and I ordered from a mob in America, it's a suspension company and they do this, it's a full polymer bush kit. So basically you can make your own polyurethane bushes, which is really cool. Um, so I've got the, the mounts out of the XL, um, they are heaps floppy and really gross. This is just a really junky rubber. Um, for road cars it's really good because it soaks up all the, um, the vibrations and all that sort of stuff from the engine so you don't get that in the cabin, but for a race car it's no good. So these are the north and south mounts um, and because of the engine rotation, the way it, um, the way it spins, uh, when you rev it, the whole thing tilts backwards and forwards and with these they're really bad at the moment, it's tilting heaps. So the polyurethane comes in different um, different thicknesses. So if anybody was into skateboarding or longboarding, you would have seen um, the drum durometer or whatever of the wheels. So they come in sort of like 65, 75, things like that. Um, and that's basically how hard the plastic is. So we've got 94A, which is a really hard plastic and they recommend this for racing applications because it doesn't absorb much of the, um, much of the shock, uh, much of the vibrations. It's really firm, but it's still got a tiny bit of give just so the engine doesn't you know, crack on its mount. Um, most skateboard wheels I was using sort of around the 74 mark, things like that. Um, the stock sort of uh, compound for these is really low. It's like in the 60s or 50s. So yeah, anyway, so I'm following the instructions that these guys have uh, given me on how to do all this. So what we need is um, tape, contact adhesive, uh, obviously our polymer, and some sand, randomly enough. Um, so what we do is we'll tape up, we do some contact adhesive on here to seal it up. We tape everything up um, because this comes out like liquid. And then we put it into our sand and basically get it as level as possible. And when we pour it in, um, we need that to seal on the bottom. The sand is there because it's pretty fine and anything that does slightly leak, it actually bonds in the sand, um, kind of like a scab, you can cut yourself and stops the rest of it leaking out, hopefully. That's the idea anyway. So we'll start um, taping this stuff, and this stuff up and using our glue and see how we go. Okay, so first of all, we don't need any of this. Just need the two mounts and a uh, quick grip. I'm just going to cut some uh, lengths of tape so I don't have to do it when I need them. I can just line them up on the table. Okay, so preparation, preparation wise for these things, um, you got to clean them really well. So full degreaser, um, grease and wax remover, um, give them a good scrub and then I've just used some sandpaper just to clean off this uh, surface where we're going to tape and glue. Same with this one, just give it all a cleaner. So now what we can do is pop open our quick grip. Between you and me, I'm not a fan of this stuff. I hate it. Uh, it will work well for what you need. So we'll just do a good layer with an old cheeky screwdriver. The idea is this just does another layer of um, sealant for what the tape doesn't get. Now, we'll get our tape. Tape this sucker up. Out of interest to get that, there's not much in there. There's enough for, they say, two to four mounts, but I guess it depends on the size of the amounts. Um, it cost me about 80 bucks to get to Australia. It's not too bad when you look at Nile bushes and how expensive they are. 
because um, I did find some bushes for the XL and they were um, they're about 200, 250 I think so uh, under 100 bucks to get these done it's pretty bloody good Okay, so now we're just going to wait about um, half an hour to let that quick grip dry. Okay, give it a bit of time and now we can uh, make sure it's all pushed down. Hopefully the sucker doesn't leak. So this stuff goes off in about 20 minutes. So I basically have to get, um, I shake up the activator. Very good shake. Shit, steering stick. Oh, nice, steering stick. Okay, so I'm gonna pop the lid. Pour in all the activator, give it a good stir. I've opened the garage door to give us some uh, ventilation so we don't die during this. It's all uh, pre pre measured and pre mixed. So sorry, pre measured, not pre mixed. So it's pretty much exactly how much you need for all this. With these, you can cut out or burn out the old rubber and completely replace it with this stuff. And honestly, it's an absolute nightmare and I cannot be stuffed. So this will do the trick. This will make it heaps firmer. The easiest way possible. You can pay extra for red stuff. I didn't really see the point. So I just got the black. Okay, now we slowly pour it in. And now we wait 10 minutes and that will soak into any of the bits um, and hopefully it doesn't leak out the bottom. If it does, then we can just top it up because I've got heaps left. Nice. Nice. So the instructions say after 10 minutes, um, usually it dips down a bit, but I'm guessing that's usually because of really stuffed and big cavernous engine mounts. So, you know, it all seeps in and um, some of the stuff leaks out the bottom, but because these 
didn't have too many cracks or anything in them. They're pretty good, they haven't dropped down, and which means I've sealed the bottom properly, which is great. I said that's the biggest issue with people doing these, they don't seal the bottom properly, and then it all just runs out into the sand. But it looks good. And I had heaps left over, there's heaps in there. I even put some in the cup there. I'm just gonna make a random bush, which I might use later on for something. If I'd have known there was so much in there, I would have done the um, diff bushes on the saw, but uh, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. If this works though, this is, uh, this is a really cool way to do that, and much cheaper than buying Super Pro bushes or something. So I'll probably uh, buy another kit if this all works out. Um, so it's been almost 10 minutes. These set in like 20 to half an hour. Um, I'm just using the heat gun, just put a little bit of ambient warmth around them because it's pretty cold today and they need to be at a decent temperature. So not on them, but just uh, keeping the area a bit warmer. And there we go, they didn't leak. So that's awesome. I bought them in the house because it's much warmer in here. And uh, we basically leave it a day and then we can take them out of the molds and make sure they're all good. And then we've got um, seven days until they're fully cured and we can drive with them. But I'm not planning on driving anytime soon anyway. So um, yeah, once they're, once they're all cured, we can put them back in the car and hopefully they work. Okay, it's been a couple of days and these guys are all set. They take um, seven days to fully cure, so you can't go thrashing around cars for now. But, um, the bottom obviously doesn't look as pretty because that's where the tape was, um, but yeah, they sealed up really well. So you're going to be really firm, you wouldn't want these on a daily ride, but for a race car, they are going to be perfect. So I'm pretty stoked considering the equivalent was really expensive to buy um, performance bushes for these and to make these up with a similar sort of um, compound for under 100 bucks. I'm pretty happy. I actually could have done four mounts with the amount of stuff I had, but uh, you know, could have, should have, would have. So that's awesome. We'll put them back in the car and on to the next project.